Okay, so this is the ecology and entomology uh, section AGM, and we're just going to go through some updates from our recorders and a little bit about what the section's been doing. Um, so I'm going to just start by giving a little bit of an update of some of the new things that we've been doing this year. So this year we started doing what we've termed invertebrate study days at the Angela Marmot Centre, and we did four of them this year, uh, alternating them every second month. And they've been hugely successful. They've been extremely overbooked. And it's been a chance for less experienced recorders to engage with some of our more experienced recorders and get guidance on how to identify things. So they're not formal workshops. We'll have a group doing earthworms in one corner, somebody doing flies in another, spiders in another, and uh, bees in another. So they're a great way of getting together. And because they've been so successful, we've agreed as a section to, um, let me just put that on silent. <laughs> we've agreed to do them every month going forward in the new year. So they'll be getting open for booking soon enough. Um, and we do have to take bookings for them because we are limited with the number of spaces because of microscopes. So they take place at the same day the librarian is there. So the LNHS library is open to people while we're there as well. Um, in addition to that, we've also been running field recorder days. So for a long time, the LNHS has been running field meetings where we go out. Uh, but this year we started doing what we've termed field recorder days where we try and get recorders across a bunch of different taxa to go and do, I suppose, what is like a bio blitz of a site, but without all the face painting and, and public engagement, it really is designed for naturalists. So here you've got a motley crew of people. Uh, we were sampling invertebrates and, and actually botany as well on this one in a site called Hunnell Wood in Kingston. So next year I've already got events organised to go to Tol we will be going to Tolworth Club Farm, uh, also Lesnar's Abbey Wood, Perivale Wood as well. So we've got some exciting locations that we're going to and there'll be more going into the programme. As with all LNHS events, they're completely free to attend. So if you're not sure about your recording skills and you want to develop them, these are a great opportunity uh, for some informal learning alongside our recorders. So. I'll do me first and then I'll come to you, Edward, and then we'll go back to the rest of the recorder reports. So I'm now going to just do some updates from each of our, our recorders. So I cover earthworms and the two things that I just want to mention, the two projects that I've been working on in London, apart from the general field recorder days, are two projects where we've been getting the general public involved to help with earthworm sampling. Um, the first of these projects is the Earthworm Image Recognition Project, where we've had people helping us sample earthworms at sites in London. I've been further afield as well, but we've done at least three of these in London, where, or maybe four actually, where we've been collecting earthworms and then photographing them with smartphones and ice cream tubs, as you can see in the um, photo here. And so as well as gathering Earthworm species occurrence records, we've been gathering images for a training library. So I take all the specimens away, ID them under the microscope, and then I link those specimens back to the photos that everybody's taken so that we're gathering data for uh, a, an app that uses machine learning to hopefully enable us to identify earthworms from images. Although the jury's still out as to whether it will work. The second project I've been working on is with the Royal Parks and we've been sampling in Bushy Park in Kensington Gardens uh, in areas that have been cleared of leaves and adjacent areas that haven't um, to see if we can see what the impact is of clearing leaves on the earthworm communities in the soil. Now the jury's still out, I haven't, I've got boxes of earthworms right next to me still to ID uh, but hopefully we'll have something coming out in the new year that will uh, report on the findings from that project. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Edward, if you give us your spider update. Okay, fine. Hi. Um, yes, I'm sorry I haven't got the pictures. Um, and I haven't got very much to report, but I've just got one or two little little things. Um, they're not actually, <clears throat> a couple of things are not actually society organised things, but there was a, 
Uh, some people may remember there was an exhibition of spiders webs at the um, in Hyde Park at the Serpentine Gallery with a naturalist from, I think, Germany. Um, and they had the idea of expanding the exhibition out into the park. So uh, they asked for some help and I took them around to have a look and see what we could find in Kensington Gardens, um, not far from, um, from the gallery. Uh, the spider's webs were absolutely amazing. I don't know if anyone uh, visited the, the exhibition and I'm not quite sure if it's still on or whether it's finished, but they were, it was extraordinary. I don't know how they'd managed to get um, various spiders to spin a web on a frame and then exhibit it, but it was quite remarkable. Um, then the other thing, um, then we also, the other thing which was a new idea, which I think the society might um, might go along with is, um, I did a walk for the Friends of Cold Fall Wood and tried to advertise the society there. And the lady who organized it said, would it be possible to look for spiders after dark? So we then had a second um, spider foray there at night uh, with torches. And this was in, a, in woods. And to be honest with you, I was absolutely amazed at how many spiders we could see because every little tiny bit of um, web that during the daytime looks if it's abandoned had a spider on it. And I hadn't done this before in England, um, but it was amazing. And I think um, well worth something that, we, you know, well worth repeating. Now, the pictures I wanted to show you were of Argiope uh, brunicae, which you probably know is the wasp spider, which is a very, very characteristic spider and is now fairly common around London and the Southeast generally. Uh, it was only known on the South Coast uh, about 50 or 60 years ago, and it has gradually spread up. And I think the furthest north it's been recorded now is Yorkshire. Uh, and some people say, and I have seen um, articles claiming that this is something to do with um, climate change and that the warming um, uh, summer temperatures are um, have helped this um, spider expand. I'm not absolutely sure about that. And I wanted to, I had some other photographs to show you why I think, um, what I think is more relevant, which is that uh, if you can imagine picture one is long grass, a few sorrel plants and some tussocks and things, and uh, which is in a corner of Myland Park, a normal bit of wild um, grass, grassy area in one of the, the more, um, open parks that's not completely mown, uh, in that long grass you might find the wasp spider because it tends to spin a web no, no higher than about a meter off the ground because it feeds on grasshoppers. Uh, now then I wanted to show you what has unfortunately happened in two areas in Myland Park and appallingly in Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park which is regards itself as a nature reserve and has is trying to establish both um, hedgehogs and slow worms. But in both those cases in September, heavy machine mowing destroyed large areas of wild grassland. And this, I was appalled. I saw I, in, in Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park, I counted 30 destroyed anthills. This is a dreadful uh, behavior because what I was gonna say about the expansion of the territory of the um, wasp spider is that it's because these wild areas have been allowed to develop in many open spaces that's given opportunities for wasp spiders to spread, which I think is actually the main cause of it spreading north. But that sort of heavy mowing with not only mowing, but mowing with a machine which the guy sits on. And I think the damage to grassland habitats with that sort of behavior uh, is very serious. And I actually think in addition to clearing it, which is just like what you see in the Amazon, just destroying the habitat completely. It, I think also a major problem of using these machines is the compaction of the soil. 
which I think uh, is a major problem, certainly for spiders and for a lot of other things as well. And of course, if you cut it, cut all the long grass, clear all the tusks and everything, you, you lose um, frogs, newts, toads, slow worms, uh, potentially voles, mice and shrews, other, many other spiders, and of course, ants and antills. Uh, the only other thing I've got to say is that um, the Hampstead Heath Survey has been doing quite a bit of spider work, um, separate from um, what, what I've uh, been offering, but I'm hoping next summer we might um, have a couple of society spider forays, as I say, maybe one of them um, in a piece of woodland such as Lesnes Abbey Woods after dark. Brilliant. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Okay, right. Questions? <laughs> Sorry, Edward, I don't think we have time. No, for, okay, fine. We're already late for Tony's talk. So, um, Ordinata, so dragonflies and damselflies, I'm just going to read through this. Uh, this is the report from Neil Anderson, um, but there'll be much more information in the London Naturalist for members. On, on downside, again, no records of the emerald damselfly from middle Middlesex sector, a species thought to be declining in the UK. Uh, it's been reported from two sector sites within Hertfordshire and seems to be doing okay at some suitable Surrey sites. In contrast, recent colonist Willow Emerald Damselfly now with widespread throughout and report of the scarce Emerald Dams Damselfly from one regular site. Uh, a credible description of the golden ringed dragonfly from the Croydon area, um, which is a species not normally expected in our area, but a resident of some of the Surrey heaths, so a probable wanderer. Another poor year for the migrant red vein data, but the lesser emperor reported from six sites and likely to be breeding at some of these sites. Another species that has dramatically spread in England is the Norfolk hawker, and that's reported from nine sites with a concentration in the Lee Valley and an incredible 14 reported from Corn Mill Meadows. Several also at London Wetland Centre were probably breeding and a record from Crossness. And then finally, the scarce chaser is being reported from five sites with around 10 reported from Dartford Marshes. Um, so from Butterflies, Leslie Williams has reported that recording involves many people using a range of survey methods. Transect walks can provide valuable information for individual sites on changes in abundance for species. Uh, the London Butterfly Atlas, much work done during this year, particular thanks for the help with checking. And the photo we've got here is of a marble white on knapweed. So I think it's just really important to stress that any butterfly records, get them into iRecord uh, and they'll they'll make their way to Leslie. So Tony, our bees and wasps recorder, who you're going to hear more from later, uh, he's still working through the data. So there's still more data uh, and more updates to come. Uh, possible expansion of Vipers, Mugloss, Mason Bee in East London. We've got new sites for the large scabious mining bee discovered. Continued expansion of the bee wolf across London. Uh, increasing numbers of the European orchid bee have been recorded. And the small scissor bee seems to be supported by gar garden varieties of ca Campanula. Uh, second record for the fly wolf on Hampstead Heath and two nest sites reported for the Asian hornet unfortunately. Um, so from our reptile amphibian recorder, Tom Langton, he's re recorded some instances of predation of snakes from birds of prey. So Robert Calf reported seeing a common buzzard carrying a large snake, presumably a grass snake, on the southwest edge of Rufflock Trent Park in Enfield. Uh, where he has not seen them for a few years. Also in May, a buzzard flew over Tom's garden hedge in Suffolk with an adult grass snake. It stalled on seeing them and dropped it, turning away. Unfortunately, the grass snake was fatally injured, so it was euthanized, uh, but he left it out and it was taken by something later on. In 2022, some months apart, uh, they saw they twice saw a red kite taking grass snakes in our front meadow. So he's not seen this here in 30 years. It seems they've learned to come here to feed. In isolated snake sites, especially in urban areas, this could have an impact on snake populations. So although these birds, these two birds of prey better establish, or as they better establish, they move off rural kill potentially and learn where to hunt. Uh, Tom is saying, please get your records to him uh, if you've seen this elsewhere. 
or anywhere. Uh, we've got fi final recorded report is from Tristan Bantock, True Bugs. One species new to Britain discovered in the London area during 2023, and that's the plant hopper, Calesia monocerus. Uh, several specimens swept from dry, acid grass in a bushy park. The food plants are various sedges. Uh, and some other species of interest include the vernal shield bug. Several NH LNHS area records in 2023 listed there. Historically, a rare species of South England or Southern England uh, and showing signs of recent increase. We've got Ropolis maculatus, a rare species of wet heats. And we had our second LNHS area record in 2023 from Richmond Park. And then we've got Beosus maritimus. Uh, historically a coastal species, hence the name, of southern England, now moving inland. The first LNHS area record in 2021 from Thames area of South Essex. Further records in southern and western London in 2022 and 2023.